Theater. Brought to you by DuPont, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Nearly everything in our daily lives is improved by chemistry. From transportation to the clothes we wear, chemistry helps bring us better food, makes our homes more beautiful, more comfortable, helps protect our health, and adds to the enjoyment of our leisure time. Now, tonight's story on the DuPont Theater. Meat market. Hiya, Harriet. Well, who else would be calling me at this hour, sweetie? Past eight? Wow. Yeah, I just finished the books. Well, after taxes and paying the bills and the rent, we'll have enough left over to remodel your old winter coat and dry clean mine. <laughs> no, not quite that bad, but almost. Okay, I'm closing now. I'll see you soon. Send the police. Right. You see it, Joe? Yeah. Who do I call? The operator? Report an accident at Maine and Linden. Need the police and an ambulance. Gee, thanks. You know, all of a sudden. Yeah. Boy, that that really shook me. A thing like that can give anybody the shakes. You know, that's the first time I ever saw a man. I hollered to him, but he didn't seem to hear. That driver looked like he hit the old man on purpose. I got a good look at him. Well, you're still kind of pale. Sit down a minute. You don't need us out there. License plate. It began with AR and had four numbers. Six, three. Nice place you got. Huh? Oh, yeah. Six, three, four. Four. That's it. AR. Six, three, four. Business must be kind of slow around here. Oh, it's not bad. I got my regular customers. The important thing is I'm my own boss. Nice looking family. Yours? I don't think I can remember that last number. Oh, they can trace the car with what you got. Let's see. Hey, what are you...
What is this? Who are you? I'm your friend, Joe. I'm going to see you stay out of trouble. You and your nice family. There he is, officer. He saw it. Did you catch what kind of car, mister? The license plate? Well, it was um, a, a black sedan, four door. I didn't see the make. What else? It was too dark to see. I thought you said, Joe, that... I did, Doc. I saw the whole thing, but the guy sped away. Give me your name and address. Joe Kohler, 128 Fulton Street. Come on down to the drugstore, Joe. I'll give you a sedative. Thanks, Doc. I'm going home. Good boy, Joe. Let me take you. You're in no condition. Let me alone. I'm all right, and I'm going to walk. I'd like to meet your family. Why don't you get out of here? I did what you wanted. Let's go in, Joe. I'm not afraid of you. You get in that car. Twice is all I ever ask anybody. John B. Smith. How do you do? I've been trying to sell your husband some insurance, Mrs. Kohler. Oh, uh, I'm afraid we can't afford any more right now. <laughs> That's what everybody says, <laughs> until they need it. We have a very reasonable family plan. What's your name, son? Jimmy. You go to high school? No, sir. Junior high. Mary Weather. Oh, yeah, I know it. I'm third. That's right. My name's Betty. I go to Jackson Street Grade School. Thanks for showing me your house, Mr. Kohler. I think the estate plan would be your best bet. A nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. Good night. Good night. Well, for a salesman, he wasn't very insistent, was he? Want something to eat? Uh, I tried to keep him out of the house. No, I ate. Well, come on, honey. You sit down with the paper. I'll put these socks away. Oh, there's coffee on the stove, Joe. Thanks, I'll get some in a minute. Betty, won't you get Dad some coffee? You get it. The sheriff has a rough his corner. He'll catch them. It ends that way all the time. They always catch the outlaws. Both of you. Good night, Pop. Good night. Good night, honey. Come on, sweetie. Come on, I wonder who that can be. Good evening, Mr. Kohler, in, please. Yes? Lieutenant Folsom, Police Department. Oh. Well, come on in. Thank you. Right in here. What's the trouble, Lieutenant? You were a witness to the uh, hit and run at Main and Linden. That's right. Will you sit down? Thank you. Honey, when did this happen? Oh, just before I came home. I didn't want to say anything in front of the children. You know how they ask questions. <laughs> hey, that's my record. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Excuse me. Stop children. it. Children. Well, you're our only eyewitness, Mr. Colin. I hope you can remember more than the color and type of car. Uh, that, uh, that street wasn't very well lit, Lieutenant. Uh, what about the makeup car? Did you see the hubcaps? No, just the rear. Or would you say it was a late model car? 
Yes, sir. The headlights on? Sure. Mr. Kohler, I know you were in a state of shock, but please try to remember. When the headlights are on in a late model car, the rear license recognition lights are on, too. Now, you must have had a quick look at that license plate. Lieutenant, that car sped away awful fast. According to the skid marks, he nearly went up on the sidewalk. Yeah, he almost got me. Well, if he was that close, you should have seen the front, too. You act like I'm not trying to tell you the truth. A man was killed, Mr. Kohler. Of course, if you're afraid to speak I up... told you what I saw. How many times do I have to repeat okay, my... Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Sometimes people are afraid to get involved as witnesses. It means losing a day's work to appear in court. I can see you're not one of those. Um, who was the old man, do you know? Martin Littlefield. Name mean anything to you? No. He's the chairman of the Belton City Citizens Crime Committee, the one that's been fighting Boss Monday. Monday? Isn't he mixed up with gambling or something? He's the number one. He's been operating outside the city limits, county territory. Littlefield's been trying to get the governor to send in a special prosecutor to clean him out. Well, I'm sorry you can't help us, Mr. Kohler. This case means a lot to us. Littlefield might have been murdered. If I'd only come out of my shop just a little earlier. Oh, if you happen to remember anything else. Give me a ring, will you? Yes, I certainly will. Good night. Good night. Can't you sleep? I guess talking about the accident made me see it all over again. Must have been horrible. Maybe some hot milk will help. Jimmy, it's after 11. What are you reading? I'm reading a pamphlet on vocational high. Yeah. I'm trying to make up my mind whether to go to regular high or vocational high and learn a trade. What do you want to do? Golly, Dad, I don't know. I'm only 13. How should I know what I want to be when I'm 21? That's right. Why don't you think about regular high? In that way, you'll have four more years to make up your mind. Take your time, son. Don't let anyone force you to do anything. Ever. Not even me. Good night, son. Thanks, Dad. Good night. from DuPont. A heavily traveled superhighway at the peak of nighttime traffic. And just around the curve, over the hill, a motorist is stalled at the side of the road. A dangerous spot to be in under ordinary circumstances. But this motorist has wisely set out a warning reflector. It picks up the beam from oncoming headlights and shoots it right back, telling other drivers to be careful helping to prevent a serious accident. This is one of the many ways your night driving is made safer with warning reflectors made of DuPont Lucite acrylic resin. In fact, safety reflectors of this type are standard equipment on many trucks and buses. Another factor in night driving safety is the lens on the rear lights of your car. Chances are they too are made of Lucite. Road signs are another growing use of this remarkable plastic. When driving at night, you want to read them at a glance. Signs like these let you do it by reflecting your headlights right back. 
making the lettering stand out for quick reading. These safety devices and highway signs tell a story of business teamwork. For instance, this warning device is manufactured by a small company in the Midwest. They put the red lens and other parts together to make the warning device. The lens comes from a different company which uses a special process to reflect the maximum amount of light. The front surface is smooth, but the back of it is made up of tiny cubes which use the light from approaching cars to give the drivers a warning signal. The lens manufacturer, in turn, depends on a larger company for his basic material. He uses DuPont Lucite because of its ability to transmit light and stand up well under all kinds of weather. The unique ability of Lucite to transmit light makes it increasingly popular for lighting fixtures, too. 750 new fluorescent lighting units formed from sheets of DuPont Lucite now make New York's Third Avenue almost twice as bright as the incandescent fixtures they replaced. These lights are expected to save New York thousands of dollars every year because they use a lot less current. And the high shatter resistance of Lucite protects them from vandalism, thus reducing the need for replacements. Of course, better lighting and highway safety devices are only two examples of how other companies, large and small, use Lucite. They depend on DuPont for their basic material and for helpful technical service. And DuPont depends on them to turn the plastics into new and useful products like these. It's this kind of business teamwork which brings you so many of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, back to the DuPont Theater. $4.25. You want me to send you a bill? Mr. Kohler, you haven't dealt with the Clover Club before. I assure you that our credit is good, however. Oh, uh, it's not that I'm worried, except that I have to pay the wholesaler. Oh, I understand perfectly. And if your meat tastes as good as it looks, why, we'll be back tomorrow for another order. Just mark it, pay it, and uh, sign it, please. I certainly appreciate your business. Do you mind telling me how you came here? Somebody recommended you to my boss. Who was it? A friend of yours. Good morning, Joey boy. I see business is picking up. That's for being a good boy. The Clover Club is one of the best restaurants in town. The finest people go there. Oh, it caters to a very select clientele. From now on, you supply all the $5 steaks. If Monday owns the place, I want no part of it. Joe, what am I going to do with you? We're making a rich man out of you, and you resist. You'll sell the Clover Club, the Angel, and a half a dozen other very fine places. And you'll get checks and sign receipts. No. You're not buying me. <laughs> You're already bought, Joe. That's what you think. That's what I know.
getting ready to eat at Doc's if you hadn't come. Did you notice that man standing across the street? Yeah. What about him? Doc Stable says that he's from Interstate Oil. They're going to put a gas station on the north corner. Joe, that'll bring customers to the whole block. I hope so. I brought a couple of sandwiches and some fruit, all right? Oh, that's fine. Well, I'm going to go shopping. They got a sale on at Marshall's. Can I have some money? Yeah, take what you need. If I take what I need, you wouldn't have... Joe. Joe, this check, is it real? Yeah, some guy came in and cleaned me out of my best cuts. Well, for heaven's sakes, why didn't you say something? Why'd you come to you? This is a wholesale lot. <laughs> Wait till I tell Mrs. Staples. No, don't tell anyone, understand? But Joe, it's no crime to sell meat to the Clover Club. People don't have to know our business, Harriet. Well, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. Joe, is anything wrong? Oh, I got a little headache. Otherwise, everything's fine. Yeah. No. Honey, you go home and have a nap. Come on, I'll take care of the store. No, I'll be okay. I'm all right, honey. Now you go ahead. Well, all right. See the usual time, huh? Mm-hmm. Try not to be late. Okay. Bye. Bye. Collins is first. Okay. It's a pot roast. Now go straight home when you're finished, huh? What do you want? Why are you hounding me? Who's hounding? I'm a fresh air fit. Any objections? You got no right... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't forget, this is a free country. I told your boss he knows I won't say anything. As soon as the boss knows you're okay, he'll pull us off. How long is that supposed to take? If I knew, I'd tell you. Why don't you ask him yourself? I don't have to ask him anything. Just tell him I don't like to be shoved around, you hear? Good. We're invited over to the Staples tonight after dinner. We can't leave the kids alone. Why not? They're practically next door. No, uh, I've got to stay. I mean, I don't feel like it. Yeah, yeah, I, un I understand. Yeah, but listen, Mr. Craig. I think you better have a talk. Use a little muscle on the chump. Yeah, I'm going right back. Okay, I'll see you. Right. And now the local news. The big story here is still the hit-and-run death of Martin Littlefield, called a gangland murder by the district attorney today. This afternoon, we filmed an interview with Mrs. Littlefield. I intend to take over the chairmanship of the Citizens Committee at the next meeting. My husband was killed because he refused to allow the criminal element of this county to run our daily lives. Well, do you think he was killed because of any specific information he had? No. No, but he was a symbol of resistance. They're, they're trying to scare us into an underworld form of slavery. I don't know how long it will take, and I don't know how many people may be threatened. But I do know that with the help of the police, and all freedom-loving citizens, we can get rid of them. All right, kids, let's go to bed. Oh. Well, when's the adventure start date? I always watch it. 
Not tonight. Now, do as I say and get to bed. Good night, Mom. Good night, honey. Mom, can I go over to Sally's house for a little while? I said get to bed, Betty. Now move. If I can't watch it, I'm going over to Sally's. Dad, what's the matter with you? You know she always looks at the Western. I didn't mean to hit her. What's making you act like this? You're like a trapped animal. Honey, are you in some kind of trouble? If you are, and if you just tell me, well, maybe I could... Joe. Last night, that man that was here, and the accident. Get the kids. What? Get them in here. Betty! Jimmy! Come here now and hurry! Lieutenant Folsom, please. Get over to Doc Staples right away, Harriet, all of you. And stay there till I come back. Now go out the back way. Go, Harriet, please. Come on, kid, now come on and get your coat. Lieutenant Folsom, Joe Kohler, the witness in the Littlefield case. Please, get over to my house right away. But first, I want to tell you a couple of things that I was afraid to tell you last night. Afraid for my wife and kids. Bill Craig, Boss Monday's right-hand man. What is this? I never saw this guy in my life. At least four people saw you with him. His wife, his two kids, and the druggist. You're dead, Craig. Obstructing justice, threat to do bodily harm, accessory after the fact. I don't think we'll have any trouble with frightened witnesses after this. Thanks to you, Mr. Kohler. Seems to me you made a mistake, Joe. Mistake, mister? Let me tell you, mister. If anything happens to my wife or kids, or I'll kill you. No matter where you are, I'll find you and kill you. And make no mistake about that. You're gonna let this guy... I'm gonna help him. Let's go. Move. Police say the case against Boss Monday broke when a citizen came forward as an eyewitness to the hit-and-run death of Martin Littlefield last night. Want some more coffee, Daddy? Bars. Yeah, the thanks, sweetheart. Citizens now unafraid to add their voice to the mounting evidence against Monday and his henchmen. was a Don W. Sharp, Warren Lewis production. The world turned against him, but a childless couple saw something good in this eight-year-old that everyone else had missed. Next week, watch The Boy Nobody Wanted on the DuPont Theater. Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry.